Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. We honor you, Lord. We praise your name. Why not just exalt the name of God? Why not just magnify his goodness? Why not just thank him? Why not just love him? Show him gratitude. Show him how much you praise him. Show him how much you love him. Show him of his goodness. Show him that he's good. He's kind. Tell him how beautiful he is. Beautiful beyond comprehension. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. We adore you. We exalt you. Oh, we give you praise. We rejoice in you, Lord. Our heart gladdens you, O God. We are thankful, O God, unto you. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we bless you. Father God, I bless you. Why don't just tell God you love him? You know, God has kept you. God has kept me, you and I, until this very last day of this year, 2023. If anybody has told you you will last this long, the way you are, you will have doubted it. But God knows that he loves you. Why not just wave to him this morning and just say thank you. I have nothing else to say but thank you. Lord, you've been kind to me. Thank you. You have been good to me. Thank you. You have been merciful to me. Thank you. You have been faithful to me. Thank you. Even when I never think you are doing anything good, you have just been so kind. I just say thank you this morning. I rejoice in you. I love you, oh God. Father God, I bless your name. I give you praise. I love you, oh God. Father God, accept this incense of our worship. Father God, remember we are human. And this is just a token of our expression of love to you. How we just thought about it. That if not for you, if not that you were just mindful of us, how we could have been written off. How we could have been forgotten. How could we could have been dismembered. How we could have been written off and just made to become nothing. But you are so good to us. Your goodness excel every of our imagination. This morning we have nothing to do but to come and thank you. To say accept this incense of our worship. We have rejoiced here, oh God. We are thanking you. We are singing. We are dancing. It's because we know that you mean so much to us. In our limitation, oh God. Father God, accept this incense of our worship. Father God, we bless you. We honor you. We adore you, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Before you sit down this morning, just look across the auditorium and look at somebody and say, God has been good to me. Say it with, say it with attitude. God has been good to me. For those of you on the digital platforms watching us, God has been good to me. He's been good to me. That's why I'm here this morning. God has been good to me. He's been so kind. Wow. Father God, I thank you. Hallelujah. 
May please be seated in God's beautiful presence. You know, as we were all coming into church this morning, one of our wonderful beloved sisters, her car just, you know, stopped on her just at the entrance of the church. And I walked past, I said hello. I mean, I drove past. And I was going to enter into my office, and God said, go and encourage her because it was actually planned. It was planned just to short circuit her and to drain her joy away. So I walked up to her and said, I said, Don't, just stay where you are. Don't allow them. It's all planned. Somebody say to your neighbor, it's all planned. You see, at times when things are not going right, it's not because you are not going right. It's not because things are not working out for you. It's because some people cannot handle your progress. Some people, some people, when, when I mean people, some of those people are demonic. They can't handle the way you're going. So they will think, ah, 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 how can it go? You know, crabs. Have you gone to the market of crabs where they're selling crabs? They don't, they don't put them in cages. They don't hold them down. No crab escape in the market of crabs. You just put them in the same bowl. Because when one of them is trying to climb out, one of them will come from the bottom and say, where are you going? Come back here. We are in it together. So none of them escapes. So some people cannot handle the fact that things are going right for you. Some spirits can handle the fact that, oh, you are about to see the end of this year. That they have planned that you are not going to see. And not that you have only seen it, you have seen it dancing and rejoicing. And they can't handle it. So they just want to put, you know, in my dialect, when I was growing up, they put, say, they want to put some sand, sand in your what? Uh -huh. Some of you know what I'm saying. They want, just want to put a little bit. And when they put just a little bit, it just spoils the whole thing. It's like putting too much salt in the broth. It just messes it up. No matter how beautiful the broth is. So stay in the city, your neighbor, stay in there. Don't allow anything to drop you off. You're not yet at your stop. Amen? And on that note, I'm going to share with us a message I really believe God wants me to share with you on this note, on this day, specifically for today, that is titled, Don't Stop Until You Finish. Don't Stop Until You Finish. This message is boiled down from a real life story about a guy that some of us will have heard before. You'll have heard of him before. Many people talk about him all over the world today. It wasn't because he won and he succeeded in life. It was actually, we're talking about him today because he failed. Failure. Many of us are afraid of failing in life. In fact, the thought about failing crippled so many of us so much so that we are determined to do anything and everything that is conceivable, good or bad, just to make sure that you are not cut. You will do anything. You will buy yourself out. You will bribe yourself out. You will talk yourself out. You will do whatsoever it is just to make sure you're not counted as failure. I'm talking about no other person this morning than a man called John Stephen Aquari. He's a Tanzanian and he was not afraid of failure. In fact, when he realized that he was about to fail, he decided that he would fail gallantly. So much so that failure later referred him and regarded him as success. 
You know, when you fail, and failure also referred to you as fail. That was the way he failed. The question is not whether you failed or you, you were victorious or you passed. The question is, what do you do with what you get out of life? Because what you do with what you get, some people refer to it as the posture that you get out of what is thrown at you. I mean, some motivational speaker says it like this. They say, if life throw lemon on you, what do you turn it into? Turn it into lemonade and drink it on a sun beach. On a sun beach, you know, and just enjoy it. But some of you, if they throw lemon, in fact, you interpret it as lime. And you turn it into bitter lemon. And you carry bitterness. Wherever it is that you go. This guy didn't do that. This guy was representing his country, Tanzania, in the 1968 marathon in the Olympics in Mexico. That was the year I was born. That was why I love his story. That was the year I was born. So just shortly after I was born, about six months. So I must have been six months old. So this guy went to represent his country and marathon that he had trained all over his life for. He knew how to do it. He didn't know, he didn't need any help. He, he must have been good to represent his country. Along the line, he suffered an injury, had a broken leg, had a fall, I think he had a rib broken, his side was bleeding, his head was broken, and then they were going to you know, stretch him out of the truck. He said no. He said you just, just help him and bandage him up. And they bandaged him up. And then he started to continue to do the marathon, limping and galloping and just doing it. It was meant to be like a 30-something, um, 40, 42 kilometers, 42 kilometer race. He had the injury, I think, when he was about 19 kilometers. So not even, just round about halfway. So he started off and he said, I will continue. So later on, this time with hindsight, later on, by the time he got to the stadium, where the race was going to end, he was hearing that one hour ago, they actually presented the medal to those who won. Because he got to the end of the finish line at three hours, 25 minutes, and 27 seconds. That was an hour after all the people who raced and the people who won had been given their medals. The whole stadium had gone home. Some people were still there, but he continued the race. Some people were shocked to hear that there's still one person still running the race, so they stayed to want to know who is this person. After they had finished and they had started going, some other journalists who were covering some other events heard that there was one person who was still running the race that finished one hour plus ago. So they abandoned the race that they were, I mean, the, all the other events they were, that they were covering and rushed down to come and see the failure. He said, ah, ah, what is on his mind? Journalists now wanted to talk to him. So they asked him later on that, why were you still running? Why didn't you get stretched out? 
Why did you continue to bleed and run? Listen to what he said. And this quotation has become an iconic quotation by one of the greatest marathon sport man that has ever lived. People use it everywhere they, they speak about motivation and encouragement. And today, we are hearing about him today. He said, let me just try and find. Um, he said, he said, yeah, got it. He said, when asked why he kept running with his injury in the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico, Aquari gave one of the most memorable quotes of sporting history. He said, my country did not send me here 5,000 miles away to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish it. They didn't send me to start the race. Many of us in life are only concerned about starting a race. We call for publicity. We call everybody to come and watch us. We are about to start a race. We get the photographer, we record it. We put it on camera. We film it. We do a clip on FaceTime, I mean on, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, on everything. We are starting what? We are starting a race. But we forget about the fact that any race started must be finished. So when he answered back like that, it connected to something bigger than ever thought about. Not only was he, people who started hearing about him on the radio that he was still running, they started running back to the stadium to go and see, see him finish. So much so that the, the, the stadium now got packed again. But then, guess what? He's now in the Guinness Book of Record for the person who finished the marathon race, the latest. And he's earning from it. In fact, he's now, in fact, a motivational speaker who they will now ask him, tell us why you ran the race in three hours, 25 minutes and 25 minutes. And he will say, whatever he said. I've never heard him speak about it before. But now he goes around talking about motivating people not to allow their failure to stop them. Today, on this last day of 2023, I don't know what your posture is like. You might just look through an x-ray this whole year and you look at yourself and you think, what are they dancing for? This man called Jeremiah, what is he playing? The, what, this one that he says we should be jumping and dancing. What, what, what is the reason of dancing and jumping about this whole year? You can't understand. Because for me, I know Jeremiah. I know his wife. I know why he's playing the way he was playing. I know. The person seated beside you, I can see them. I know their address. I know why they were dancing the way they were. When you were using your eye to look at them the way you were looking at them, I know you don't understand. When Jeremiah was saying to me that I was dancing the way I was dancing, you can't understand. You say, well, is it true? The pastor is, the pastor is even dancing. He's even, look at him. He's, even dancing. He's not even ashamed of himself. I'm not ashamed of nothing. Not ashamed of you. Not ashamed of the devil. Not ashamed of my enemies. Why? Because I know what God has done for me. I know. You can't understand. If I tell you just a bit of what God has done for me, your eye will be full of tears. Because God has done beyond the normal. And this is the posture that 
This guy, I query, had when he saw failure staring him in the face. He was going to decide, am I going to give up or am I going to pick up my strength? He made up his mind that, you know, the people that got the medal that day, that won the race, some of them, they might even have stolen the medal from them. They could even have lost the medal. We don't even know their name. In fact, I've never heard who won the marathon race for that, for that year. But for him, who failed gallantly, we're still hearing his name till tomorrow. Books have been written about him. Conferences, his name has been mentioned in conferences all over the world. Why? Why? Because his posture was right. This morning, is your posture right? That's why I'm cautioning you. Don't stop until you finish. You know, in life, for this guy, Philip positioned him to become one of the most famous Olympian and even got him into the book, the Guinness Book of Records. When asked, we read what he said, and then Aquari gave that statement that has become an iconic quote. And it was like the thief on the right hand side of Jesus. You know, he will have died and be accounted for as an armed robber like his brother or his friend on the left hand side. But he picked, even at that last minute, he picked the right posture. That I know I've been bad. I know I've not done right with my life. But this guy, this guy that they are treating like this, I think there's something that's just different about him. And he was cautioning his friend, don't talk about this man like this. Don't you just, don't, you don't have any fear or regard? And that statement alone edged him into eternity and gave him a victory in life. Just that chance. Think about the chance you have today. You know, we're singing, thinking about the God who has healed us, who have helped us, who has saved us. Not only in 2023, or that we would do in 2024, but even between now and 12 midnight today, there's so much that God can do for you that will so much blow your mind as to the nature of the God that you serve. We often measure success and victory from the reports that other people award us and based on the little understanding that they have about us. So you went to school for four years and then you studied a career and then you got an A class. I mean, a first degree, I mean, sorry, a first class. And then you got a first class and then you start going around in life like first class. Meanwhile, in your life, there's nothing that is first about it. Because what makes your first class to become something is what you do with the first class after it. It's not a certificate. If you just show me a certificate that shows first class, I will sit you down and try you. Many people have shown first class certificates and then they've been tried and they are dollars. I read in the, in, in, in the news a few days ago that in some countries now, you can go there and instead of studying a career for four years, they can actually say if you can pay the price for two weeks, four weeks, they will buy you a certificate. That will give you a BSc and a PhD. And you just pay for it. That is the nature of the life that we are. We allow people and the way that they measure us to get into our heads and make up our mind that this is who we are. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the who we are is really what is God accounting you to be? What is life? Accounting for you that you are. Who are you? 
What are you? And you know what I'm talking about. If you sit down, you one on one with God, you know that you are nowhere near what you call yourself in public. All you need to do is allow God to x-ray. And for me, allowing God to x-ray my heart and show it to everybody that this is who this guy is really is. How many of us can handle that? Can you handle God putting your heart on the screen for all of us to see? That is what is going to be on the final day of judgment. Everybody will see everything. You see my heart. You see all that I sh have shown. And I will see yours. And nobody can hide anymore. Amen? Today I've come to announce to you that we measure success not by what people call us, but we measure success and victory by what lies in us and what we do with what people call us. Your breakthrough is in you waiting inside of you. 1 John 4.4 4 says, But you belong to God, my dear, friend, my, my dear children. You have already won the victory over those people. Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. There's a spirit that lives inside of you as you are sat there listening to me. There's a spirit that lives inside of me as you listen to me. Hear what God is sharing with us this morning. And the Bible is saying that spirit that lives inside of us is far greater than the spirit that lives outside in the world that sums up the accolades and who people call us and who people see us to be. Part of the failures or the success or the certificates or the accolades or all the you know, awards that we get, the names, big names that we get, they are all in the world. I'm not saying all these things are not wonderful, are not good. They're good. By all means, I encourage young people and children to go to school and study well. But I said, this, said to them, don't just study academics and education. Study life. Because you see, life, academics will finish. Your career will finish. Life never finishes. What you study about life takes you on and on and on until the day you expire. And one day, all of us will expire. The same way that this year is expiring, one day, each of our lives will expire. But the life that we have studied is what we leave behind. You know, <laughs> the, the honest truth is that, with all due respect, my certificates, all the awards that I have, I can give it to my children as memorabilia, memorabilia to remember me when I'm gone and show to their grandchildren and say, you know, this is who your great-grandfather is or was. This is what he did. This is what he did and all that. But they can't use it. They can't use it as their own. Fevers might come out of it, but they cannot say I'm the one that owns it because it's a ticket expire with the person who owns it. But the life that I live with them when the time comes never leaves them. They take it, they inhale it, it becomes part of them. That is what the scripture is telling to us. That the greater one is inside of you. Greater than the one that is in the world that everybody sees. And today I'm sharing with us and asking for you and I. That the good thing about this life that is inside of us is that we can access it. Somebody say, I can access it. I can access that better option. 
I can access that better resource. I can access that better, greater, um, that, that better, that, that greatness that is inside of me that is better than that one that is in the world. I can access it. And that's where I'm going to lead us to finish up on this this morning. In John chapter 1 from verse 1, it says in the beginning, the word already exists. The word was with God. And the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him. And nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. I come to say to you this morning that the only way that you can access that greater greatness that is inside of you is when you can find your way back to the source. Who is the source? The source is the one from whom everything was created. Is the man Jesus. If you can find your way back to Jesus, you have access to everything. The thief on the right hand side of Jesus, what did he do? He found himself back into Jesus. Even when the one on the left could not see, could not access, when the door was shut at him, he was able to trace his, his way back into Jesus. And what did he see? He saw life even into eternity. Let's visit one more example. In the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 1 to 19, I'm not going to be able to read it. This is the story of the 10 lepers. These were 10 lepers, and they were leprous. They were, they were leprous, and they were at the far end of the town because they could not mix up with people. And they heard that Jesus was passing by. And they asked Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus said, what shall I do? He said, we're leprous. And he said, go and show yourself to the priest. Because at that time, those who were leprous <clears throat> are not allowed to come in the midst of people. They were made to go and stay at the far edge of the town. So they don't mix up with people. So the only way that they could mix up with people is if the priest, priest, and they got license and passed to say, okay, you are okay. You can go back into the city. You get me? So Jesus said to them, go and show yourself back to the priest. Let's see what happened as they did that. The Bible records Yeah, in verse 14, he looked at them and said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, somebody say, as they went. As they went means as they obeyed. As they obeyed, they were cleansed of their leprosy. So they were obedient and then healing came. They were cleansed. That cleansing was a license for them to gain access back into town. But then, something now happened. In the frenzy of the excitement that they have been healed, that they have been cleansed, that they have been given access to return back into the city, nine of them took off, went and started throwing parties, went and started rejoicing, sharing the testimonies, they're saying, they, you know, they, they start picking up the fact that, oh, wow, let me go and see the person I've not seen for ages. Let me go and tell that person that said I would never come back to town, that I'm now back in town. I'm now back in town. God has healed me. They started going all around, but they forgot. They forgot what was most important. What was most important? The person who sent them to go and see the priest. One of them got a right posture. The same way that Kalwari of Tanzania 
picked up the right posture from his failure and decided to look inward to what he could do better. The same way that the thief on the right hand side of Jesus looked inward to say, let me trace myself back to the source of everything and requested that Jesus would save him in this, that same way. That one leper thought about it. That for me to have access back to my parents' house, back to my family, back to my job, back to my health, back to what I have never been able to do for the past three, four years, have access to the things that God has given me chance to be reconnected to, I've got to go and give thanks. Let me go and see that man who sent me. He went back to Jesus just to say, thank you for giving me this chance. I have seen the priest. The priest say I can actually go back. So I just want to come and give you a feedback. Giving that feedback was all that gave him the ability to finish. When the other nine stopped, he progressed nonstop to make sure that he finished the race. And what did he get? Let me read this to you. He says, Jesus said in verse 17, Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner to make it worse? The only one that came back was a foreigner. The least of them that was not expected. You know, this tells a lot of stories about we Christianese, we who know about how church is. We speak the right language. We know what to do in church. We know what to we know how to pray. We know exactly what it is when we we know what the pastor is going to say next. We've heard the message before. We've heard the message the, the, the revelations before. It's not a new thing. You know, it, it just makes sense to us to say that, oh, I've heard that before. This man did not allow that to get into his head. He looked at himself as a simple baby and went back to Jesus. He said, what should I do next? And Jesus instructed him. He said, and Jesus said unto the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. This man got the full package of complete healing. Those guys who left forgotten what had happened and not mindful of the source, they only took a bite of everything that was available. In a very short time from then, I'm sure they will see, ah, were we not healed at the same time? How come you are now a lot better than us where I went back? You mean you went back? I thought, I thought Jesus was going somewhere. Did he stay there? No, no, no. He went and looked for Jesus. He made sure he found Jesus out. He did not allow the fact that he got an access to God into his head. I want to caution you. I want to encourage you. I want to empower you. At this point that we are on the brink of this exchange of 2023 and 2024, a lot of things transpire. And you determine what happens to you. The Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. If you know a tree by, their, by its fruit, what determines the fruit that a tree is going to bring is a seed. The seed ultimately determines the fruit. The seed of 2024 is already in you. What seed are you carrying for next year? The seed you're carrying is the posture.
for your 2024. So I'm charging you today. Carry the posture of the winner. Carry the posture of the one that has God on their side. Carry the posture of the one who is ready to do business with God. I'm going to end it here today and I want to challenge you to be back this evening when we will journey along together in 2024. There was this set of beautiful prayers that Pastor Tony led us to pray last night at the Going for Gold. We prayed it from Isaiah 52 verse 1 to 3. And she's, she's, I've asked her to send me that prayer. We're going to send it on broadcast to all of you. If, if you require some prayer that you can use to just get your mind prepared ahead of tonight, these are the prayers you should pray. Don't pray for a new car. 2024. No. Don't pray for a new house. All those things will come. Somebody say amen. All those things, you don't need to pray for them. I had a man of God reminded us to say that, do you know there was a time, and I remember those times, that when we go to church, we never used to say prayer points. We never used to say, well, please, can you submit your prayer points to Apostle Toy Balogo? Submit your prayer point. Prayer point, please. Submit your prayer point to Apostle Toy Balogo. There was a time it never used to be like that. There was no prayer points in churches. What was there is people loving God. What we know was people loving God. And as you are loving God and obeying God, all those things are lining up following you. Following you. One of the quarrels that I had with Pastor Toy when we got married was that I never used to pray about my personal needs. I never used to. And today I still find it really, I have to be, you know, they are meant to follow me. I don't pray for them. All I need to do is do what? Do the king's business. Once you are doing the king's business, all those things follow you. They come with the package. They come along. Before you mention it, he knows you need it. In 2024, don't pray for those things. They are kit cards. You can buy Kit Kat from the shop. Don't go and ask God for Kit Kat. Some of you now, if God just appear in front of you and say, what should I do for you? Do you know you have, you won't know what to say. Because what you have in mind is material things. Look for and ask for God for tangible things. So when we share these prayer points with you, pray them. Between now and 12 midnight, when we get back in church, and let them set your mind ready. Media team, as we send that to you, please broadcast it once we finish the service so everybody can go home with it. If you want to have a nap, have a nap this afternoon. If you want to just sit down and just go and reflect, take a walk and just reflect on this prayer point, do them and let it set your mind ready. For the rest of this year. And even as you are doing that, you will encounter God. Amen? And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Say to your neighbor, don't stop until you finish. Amen. Let's bow down our heads. Father, we ask of you that you will propel us to be yielding in the authority of this word that we have heard and plan on a journey with you a journey that will set set the platform for us to be showcased as your chosen children why not just ask God to position you ready for the rest of this year and for the year that is coming ahead of us. Like I said, the remaining of the hours in this year, even though it's long spent, the year is just about to roll off, there's still so much more that God can do, God wants to do with you. 
before this year runs out. Ask God to say that God, I am ready for you. I'm ready and be determined to God to do business with you. Father God, I ask of you, strengthen me, keep me, position me, enable me. Help me, O oh God, to see you correctly. Father God, let my mindset be of them, O oh Lord, that is willing and ready. Lord God, I use this time to pray for our wonderful children who are with us in this service. Even though they are young heart, they are still very at a very young period of their lives. They are here listening and hearing us. Father, I hear that even in the innocence of their heart, let the seed of this word that they have heard be sown into their lives to establish them and make them be rooted in the presence of and the faith of the God that we serve. In the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, and cover the lives of each and every one of us. Including these children. In the blood of Jesus. Father God, we thank you so much. We bless and we honor you. We remember at this time. Those who are not able to be with us in this service. For one reason or the other. Especially, O oh God, for those who might be going through difficult times. Some people are mourning. Some people are going through bad times. Some people are going through very challenging times with their, with their health, with their lives. We pray for them. Father God, we hold them, guard them, O oh God, and hold them by your hand of righteousness. Father God, let them, O oh God, be partakers of this blessing in the name of Jesus. We thank and we bless you. We honor you. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you this evening at the watch night. Start at 9 p.m. The media team are going to show a clip to us on the screen just as I finish up. And then Pastor Christy will come and round up the service for us in a few minutes. God bless. shortest cut to abundance is thanksgiving. I unravel before you a mystery and nothing finishes in the hands of a thanksgiver. Because what prayer brings, wisdom keeps, but thanksgiving multiplies. You see, appreciation is qualification for multiplication. You are not where you want to be this year, but you are not also where you used to be. Another man's testimony does not connote your downfall. When comparison is encouraged, an ingrate is born. Thanksgiving is key to more of anything. And you see, even if things got worse for you this year, the fact that you can still have your senses intact to identify your problems is enough reason to give thanks. A madman on the street is not aware of his predicament. If you can think, you can thank. In all situations, give thanks to because something worse could have happened. Jesus healed ten lepers, but only one came back and said thank you. And then Jesus asked a question. He said, where are the nine? And this year, we feel to be among the nine. In 2024, we we'll need you prepare. Give thanks. Amen. Hallelujah.